Hello, I've been asked a question by a lady who asks, is it possible to forgive and forget? Now she's probably hurting from some wound deep in her heart. Someone has done something to her and betrayed her or hurt her and she's finding it difficult to forgive. She's not alone. We all struggle with that issue and this is not the first time that I've been asked this question. First of all, the phrase forgive and forget, which is one we use commonly, isn't a, a phrase that comes from the Bible. But when we look at how God forgives, we can see how it kind of fits. In Jeremiah, we're told that God is the one who, who blots out our sins and will remember them no more. In 1 Corinthians 13, it tells us that love keeps no record of wrongs. And because God is love, that's how he forgives you and me. He keeps no record of the wrongs that we've done. But we're not God. We're us. And we have a heart that isn't naturally as loving as God's. In fact, it's fallen. It's, it's sinful. And it keeps telling us not to forgive, to treat the other person like they have treated you, not to treat them as if they'd never done that wrong. So how can we forgive and forget? Now remember, God's ideal for you and for me is that we do forgive and forget. But this is how it works with us. Forgiveness is the decision that you and I make to treat someone else as if they had never wronged us for the sake of Jesus Christ. That's what forgiveness is. But then of course we have the hurt that has been caused in our lives. And this uh, hurt can continue for a, a long time, sometimes unfortunately for whole lifetimes. And the book of Hebrews tells us that we are not to allow the root of bitterness to grow in our heart. Because this hurt can, is like fertilizer that can make bitterness grow in our lives against this other person who is wronged us, sometimes against a whole group of people, even against everyone, the whole world. You know, I've met people like that and it's, it's very sad. So once we have made the decision to forgive and we have forgiven that person from our heart, not as an emotional thing, but as, as a principle that we want to be like God. We want to forgive others like he has forgiven us and he's forgiven us so much more than we'll ever have to forgive anyone. What do we do next? We've got to deal with that hurt with our wounded heart because as long as we have those wounds in our heart the temptation will always be there to stop forgiving and to and to be bitter towards the other person. How do we do that? We do that by taking that hurt to Jesus Christ. That's the burden that Jesus talks about when he says, I know that you're laden, you carry heavy burdens, bring them to me and I will give you rest. That's the rest he talks about. So yes, forgiveness is the decision that we make to treat someone else as if they'd never wronged us for Christ's sake. But we need to forgive and we need to keep on forgiving. And as our wounded hearts are healed by the grace of God, more and more we will forget. We'll lose the sensation of the pain that that wound has caused us until we are fully healed by grace. In fact, you know, it's all of grace. Paul says that. It's of grace that you have been forgiven. It's by grace that you are given power by the Holy Spirit to forgive someone else, to make that decision to treat that person as if they'd never wronged you. And then it's by grace that your heart is healed. It doesn't happen immediately. You know, it does take time because the work of grace, it is instantaneous when you choose to forgive, but then it, it continues and it carries on to restore your heart to where it was before you were wounded. Now, of course, none of this means that sin doesn't have its consequences because sin has consequences that are unrelated to forgiveness. Whether you have forgiven someone or not or been forgiven yourself, there can still be consequences in your life. And, you know, it's not right, for example, for uh, you to give uh, your trust wholly and in an uninhibited way, as you might have previously done, to someone who raped you. You cannot give your children into the unsupervised care, or probably not into the care at all, of someone who has abused them previously, because it, it doesn't work that way. But even when those consequences apply, you can still choose to forgive that person and treat them as if they'd never wronged you from in your heart and in how you relate to them. And you can also choose to see that person with the love and the respect that a forgiven person should receive. It doesn't happen right away, but the grace of God is powerful. You know, that, that trickle of water can wear away a hole in the hardest rock. 
And in the same way, the grace of God can bless your life so that you can forgive and you can forget. You can forget those hurts that the sin has caused in your own heart. May God bless you. I hope that helps you. And uh, let's go out and forgive some people for the sake of Christ. And because however much we forgive others, we've been forgiven more.